Let's learn the running stitch and everything that you need to know to start using it. It is a fundamental stitch that every embroiderer must know. I have used a flower pattern to show you the stitch. Let's begin by stitching this stem. I'm using three strands of the embroidery floss. Let me show you the stab method first. Begin by coming out from one end of the stem. Then go in through the fabric on the stitch line. Here I made a single stitch. Now come out from under the fabric with a small gap. Go in through the fabric again. Just keep up with this process. Make sure the length of your stitches is more or less the same. The stab method is excellent while working with thick fabric or different layers of fabrics put together. In this method, you will be pulling out the needle completely after passing it through the fabric each time. Now let us stitch the remaining part of the stem using the sew method. Come out on the stitch line and pluck a bit of fabric to pull out the needle completely. This process makes a stitch and a gap at the same time. Again, you plug the fabric and pull out the needle completely. The sew method is great while working on single layers of fabric. It saves time and effort by avoiding the need to pull the needle from under the embroidery hoop or fabric every time. Now I will show you how to work on a circle or a similar closed pattern. Since a circle does not have a definite start or end point, you can begin your stitch from just about anywhere on the stitch line. I will use the sewing method to work around the circle. Now, while working on a circle, the challenge is to join the first and the last stitch seamlessly. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now this will work not only on circles, but any such closed pattern that does not have any corners or start or end points, like an oval. As you approach the end of the circle, Gauge how many stitches you can probably fit into that remaining space. Then, if necessary, adjust the length of the last couple of stitches so that you can accommodate a gap between the first and the last stitches. And there you have a seamlessly stitched circle. Now let's move on to the petals and see how well the running stitch can take on curves. I would come out from one end of the petal and use the sew method to work my way on the outline. As I approach the curvy part, I would make my stitches slightly small to accommodate the curve smoothly. The rule of the thumb would be the sharper the curve, the smaller the stitches. Now note that I have left gaps between the stitches at different parts of the pattern. This makes the pattern look seamless. We are almost done with the petals.
Let's see how we can do the crisp corners using the running stitch. I will work on this rectangle frame around the flower. I will begin by coming out from one end of the pattern or in this case one of the corner points of the frame. And then I use the sewing method to work my way up on the outline. Note how I can do multiple stitches using the sewing method. For a sharp corner, always pass the needle through the corner points, either from the top or the bottom of the fabric. In this corner, I'm coming out from the bottom of the fabric. I had to adjust the last couple of stitches slightly to ensure that my needle passes through the corner point. I then continue to stitch. I have a sharp corner now. As I approach the other corner, I can go through the corner point from the top of the fabric. And then I continue to stitch as usual over the stitch line. I finish my frame and make sure to leave a gap between the first and the last stitches. Let me show you how the reverse looks like. To end the stitch, pass the needle under the nearest stitch. Then pass under it again and loop the thread around the needle to pull out the needle and create a knot. And your stitch is super secure now. Here are some variations of the running stitch that I have made for comparison. You can make a running stitch with the stitches and gaps of equal lengths or long stitches and small gaps or even small stitches and long gaps. Whatever variation you choose, remember to keep it consistent. Since this flower pattern had a lot of curves, I had decided to keep the stitches small. I hope you enjoyed learning the running stitch. If you have, then give us a like and share it with the others. Subscribe to our channel for more videos to learn everything you need to know about a stitch in just 10 minutes. You are now ready to use a running stitch on any pattern. If you want to practice this pattern, it is available on our website and the link is in the description. Make something beautiful today!